Today we're going to have a little chat about what it's like to hire a designer, what it's like to work with a designer as a developer, and our general musings about that. I am MPJ. And I'm David. And you're watching Dev Tips. Okay, welcome. You see, there's something different about all this. What is different, David? It looks I'm very... in the basement! Way! I got degraded, but it's more <laughs> spacious here. And uh, I make less noise, so I'm not inter like I'm not interrupting my mother-in-law when she's doing other things here in her house. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful here. Alright, yeah, it, I kind of like, I, I find birds, like it, birds. It seems cozy. Yeah, other bird, boat, yeah. So, we have both hired designers we are developers and we are not super good at design like once upon a time I, I i was okay with web design but that was in 2008 i think was the last uh, web design work i really 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 like that i did where i designed something myself because your education does have sort of a media component right <laughs> Sort of. It's called. Uh, it was called media technology and engineering. So it was basically computer science, but focused on uh, the computer science behind media, such as video and uh, 3D graphics. So not really anything about the design aspects or the software parts. What's your experience with using services where you can like apply for a design? Like you want a logo or a web design? And then you post that on a marketplace and people give you offers. I've had a here, like I've used 99designs quite a number of times. We're not sponsored, uh, but we would like to be sponsored by 99designs. Send uh, us an email. Would we, would we though? Would we though? I'm not sure that they are all that popular among the designers. And we have a lot of designers in there. They like, can I still email us. <laughs> That's true. We want to be, at least, we want to be wanted by yes, 99 yes. Designs as yeah, a potential. Right. By the way, like, write in the comments in be uh, below if you have an opinion on 99 Designs. But it has been relatively successful because they started out, I used 99 Designs way before it was even called 99 Designs. It, uh, what was it, it was, called then? No, it wasn't called anything. It was just a sub uh, a sub topic on the site point forums. Oh, what so, is ninety nine designs from? Is that? Yeah, from it's a yeah, it's a branch off from the site point oh, forums. So I, they I had like that. yeah, That's so cool. they started out doing these logo competitions and. <clears throat> um, uh, so people were just like, hey, I want a logo. I fifty bucks for someone that does the logo and then it just escalated 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 and they like branched it off in a completely separate little business which is pretty cool and you were sort of like a prominent writer on sitepoint right i uh yeah i wrote it... for sitepoint and i was a moderator on the sitepoint forums so that was around pretty much 2005 where I... or something yeah oh jesus christ no it was even earlier I think if it there was... is if there are posts i will put them in the episode description yeah, I think that it's actually possible to, uh, with some serious fucking Googling, to find the first question that I ever posted on the internet about programming. So you have you, you used 99designs to try and find someone to make a logo for you, right? Yeah, it works really well if you offer quite a substantial sum of money and you use that thing where um, you guarantee that there will be a winner. Uh, and uh, because otherwise it's just like, I think that a lot of designers consider it to be a potential waste of time. And I, uh, and I agree. I think mm. that like a competition is bad enough and high risk enough, uh, for, uh, for someone. So, uh, yeah, it makes sense. I wouldn't participate in those either. That said, like from a career standpoint, I think it's like kind of disgusting, like as a developer, I wouldn't develop applications uh, each, like, oh. <laughs> yeah, just build this React app and then maybe they will pay you if they select your app. Exactly. It becomes weird for any other kind of consultancy, but it kind of, uh, designers, people have such a messed up view about how hard design is, so it works. Plus, it kind of works when it's it's a very narrow scope, like a logo. In order to get that 
get the client to like one you have to like do a lot of them and just something that sticks i can't argue with the results we've gotten really good logos out yeah of, so like the uh, old fun fun function logo is that from one of those marketplaces no. yeah the the the, the, the monkey, monkey thing yeah. yeah so i've done the same with uh, outsourcing programming uh I, I was building this app like five years ago and then i wanted it parts of like ios I didn't know how to build some iOS parts and I tried to outsource that. Uh, I don't know. It was it was pain. It, it took more time managing everything than if I would just have sat down and tried to learn everything myself and just build yeah. it. Like, yeah, even, like it took more time than watching YouTube videos for a week to learn about Xcode. The whole meta work of introducing another person, like the bandwidth required between two people in order to transfer stuff out of your head into the minds of someone else is uh, like, that's uh, that's a time sink that I, I think that people discount when they think about outsourcing. Actually, Fun Fun Function is a good example because the new Fun Fun Function logo is actually not outsourced no uh it's made by the matilda which uh the which is matilda a, yeah exactly we'll li like she's amazing uh we have we'll link uh we'll link her in the episode description if you if you ever wanted to need a designer so we were working in the same um, office space many years back and like we just enjoyed uh, chit chatting around the coffee machine and uh, then eventually we me and Matthias needed some designs and I asked her, can you help us? And then we sat down for coffee and just sort of discussed what we were looking for. Then I sent her some inspirational images. She came back with her first suggestion and it was just like almost perfect. She was extremely good at what I kind of refer to as the read. Yeah. Uh, talking with the client and then you're like, okay, I think they want this. Did I drop Matthias or did he drop me? No, you didn't drop. I just like oh, my, you're just my, silent my, my, because my train, my train, that... my, my train of thought was <laughs> like ended. I'm using cable now instead of Wi-Fi, so I hope that we will still have a connection. Streaming woes. The whole thing with marketplaces, I guess people go to the marketplace because they want to find either they want to have a big variety of like a big selection of designers. But perhaps they really just want a big selection of designs. And then you might as well just have one designer that is pretty good. And perhaps it's not the most, the cheapest one. Just some like get a good, uh, if, if they, because if, if you were as a designer get paid well, you will do well. But it's like the nice thing that I found with, with working with Matilda was that we didn't have to spend like ages selecting designs. She oh yeah, you're of, right. She just uh, gave us the perfect one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I remember that there's a story that, about the designer that made the... Was it the Apple logo? or I'm not sure what designer was involved with, but it was like some kind of thing. Some designer that uh, Steve Jobs hired to do something. Mm -hmm. And he offered, like, Jobs said to him, yeah, send, send me a couple of options. And the designer was like, no, I will understand you, I will talk to you, I will understand your needs, and then I will give you the uh, optimum design, uh, given my understanding of your situation. And Jobs backed down, like he understood like, yeah, that's actually the correct way of doing this. You need like, if you hire someone, trust them in their work and trust their judgment. But I guess, so now we were sort of lucky that we had this contact that was good and efficient and we have only had uh, really one meeting and then some like using Facebook Messenger, some communication. And then we've, everyone is satisfied. We got build, we got the, the SVG or whatever and everything yeah. is fine. But if you don't have that, how, is that why you use the marketplace? Because you don't know any good designer? Is, or why I do you go to the marketplace? Yeah, I would say so. Like, I think that for for me, uh, if you have someone that you... W that's a break. 
Break time. Okay, look what I had. Like normally, oh, I, ho, ho. I normally I forget to uh, buy. Like we we we're, we're trying to do like these uh, fika breaks in the Swedish fika breaks in, in the episodes, and I constantly forget to buy actual fika. And I've actually forgotten to buy fika this time as well. However, I work in a co-working space, so I just walked to the kitchen and stole these. Oh. Uh, they are uh, called kardemumma fin skorpor. Uh, Cardamom I wonder where my cookie... I also brought cookies here, but I can't find them now. It's such... I, uh, look, it's always a danger to involve, <laughs> like, crispy cookies uh, when it comes to microphones, because it always goes like this. Uh, it's such a mess here. <sighs> Dude, you have no idea how fucking messy this office is. Uh, Keep that tape yeah. rolling, I'm gonna go find some cookies. Alright, so... Exactly outside of this frame, this office is a fucking disaster. Like people walked in here and they just you could just see the disgust on their face. Um, it's like I'm keeping the door closed now so that nobody can see it because it's so embarrassing. And I got a complete mess. Last week was um, Nordic JS, which is a fantastic JavaScript conference that I was um co-hosting uh so we're presenting all the speakers and it was super super intense it was basically three days of just non-stop work with some sleep in between which ended with like a huge after party which was basically me like totally relaxed grabbing one beer and becoming super drunk instantly oh god it was you so did not good. just drink one beer I did not, but like I, I was drunk after the first beer. You were really drunk. Yeah, I don't, I know, but I, I Me like, too. I, I deserved that. I, I, I have never yes. deserved alcohol so much in my entire life. Good lord, a lot of pent up wanting to drink beer. Okay, coffee break is over. I have finished my cookie. Oh man, but you have to tell some story as well. I told a story last time. No, but it was a shit story. Now tell something about Nordic Jazz. Tell, tell us about like the interviews. I haven't talked about that. Oh yeah, so we did all these interviews. Uh, Matthias was interviewing and I did the uh, behind the scenes stuff, setting up all the cameras, fixing with the light, and uh, it's not perfect, but it's all okay. Yeah, so was... and, and by the time that uh, this video goes up, that interview will be live. So we oh, will cool. be linking we'll link to it. it. <laughs> and in the episode description. Sorry? I can't and hear you. It... You have to speak because I'm clearer. Had, because I had cookies. We will link it in the episode description as well. So we did this interview and we were so lucky. Like, so we have never done interviews, but we were very, very lucky because all of the interviewees, the people we interviewed, like for one, they are super smart and clever and have interesting things to talk about, but they were also like very, very likable people. And that yeah. made it like, so I was in behind the camera and I was looking at everything and I just saw that this would be a great interview. Because even though Matthias has zero experience of interviewing, he didn't really have to do much. <laughs> like yeah. I'm not just saying that yeah. you could have been really, really sucky at it and it would still be great. Yeah, absolutely. They were just stellar. Anyway, okay, where were we? We were eating cookies. Oh, I remember now. I yeah. remember now. I, okay. I remember where, uh, where to pick this up. Great. <laughs> when, it, when it comes to the 99 designs, yeah. if you have access to working with a person that you know and trust, then that is always preferable to a marketplace. By far. Yes. Uh, the only reason why you pick 99 designs or a marketplace is because you don't have access to the good stuff. And I also would like to stress the whole thing, and that is also from my work as an analyst, that even though someone has what per is perceived as like an high, a high hourly wage, that they charge a lot by the hour, yeah. if they are good, they don't have to put many hours into it. So yes. in absolute numbers on the final resulting line, it will probably still be cheaper. And if you compare it to the quality you get, it will be like cheap, better. Yeah. And I really, really would like to stress that don't be cheap 
if you're finding someone and meeting a person that is like you feel like this person is so good at what they're doing i really want to work with him or her then you should hire them even yeah. though they are expensive price cannot be evaluated until you get the invoice and you consider what it is that you got out of that yeah that is the only thing that matters and if you are sort of afraid with the price and you want to like argue to your boss and like yeah, about oh this will be really really expensive i suggest to propose just like a small project to start with so yes. you because then you can use that the result from that project and show your boss and they will also be convinced by the result and then it's just like okay let's hire this person uh, have them work for us i mean there is this strong tendency that you have when buying services that you want to control reality you want you want certainty when there is no certainty to be had yeah and that can damage you so much as a buyer when you try to overreach and uh control reality more than it can be controlled couldn't agree more i think we're we should do more things where we disagree, actually. Uh -huh, that's because true. Because now we're agreeing. We're just thinking that, oh, this is so amazing. I want to talk a little bit about establishing rapport. What does that uh, mean? It means like... Non-native uh, English speakers. What is rapport? A rapport is like what we have because we have spent like years and years of years working uh -huh, together. So like the relationship or how you exactly. work together. Exactly. Precisely. Uh, we know sort of what kind of words you use, <laughs> uh, uh, what, what your opinions are. Like We know a lot of small little things about each other that allows our communication and work process to flow efficiently. When I worked at Spotify, I worked in a satellite office. I didn't work in the main office. And I actually spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, traveling to the Stockholm office almost just to have lunch and grab a beer with people there uh, because I found that over time I, I started building up this hate for people that that I didn't work like that I didn't meet regularly you if you just if your only contact is with people is through slack you start dehumanizing them you just if do. you have been remote working with Matthias when he was at Spotify please write a comment about that and your experiences <laughs> There was actually like, I arrived uh, to the desktop team uh, one week and there was like a little post-it on top of the board says that said like, MPJ likes us now. <laughs> that has made a lot of friction. <laughs> oh. It's not just with the designers, everything of this applies to like all work, I'd say. And just the thing about communicating and realizing that perhaps... You just know that someone, even though they're sort of quiet in a meeting, perhaps that doesn't mean that they don't want, that they don't think the meeting is important or that they don't care. It's just like the way they, they are, sort of. And if you know that, then you don't have to spend a lot of thinking about, hmm, why is he or she so silent all the time on these meetings? Yeah. Perhaps they don't think that we have the right uh, priorities or something. Or it might be the inverse, like you, yeah. you, if you know someone else, you notice like, oh, this person is silent now, this is bad. Uh, which you wouldn't know if you didn't have rapport with them. Um, I, I want to touch on communication tools. Yeah. Uh, because um, like at Spotify, um, a lot of designers started learning animation tooling, like After Effects. Mm. Um, because there's a lot of animations going on in uh, modern applications, just creating transitions and stuff. And those just can't be communicated through, uh, through sketch. You need to be able to actually show how the animations are supposed to be done to the developers. Uh, otherwise it's gonna create like this weird, like long ass feedback loop where the, design, the developer tries playing designer with, with animations. Using an animation and creating like an entire like little movie about how the application should look was a really, really clear way for uh, designers to communicate what the application was like. So what are you, so you're saying that when the designers went out of their like sketch box or illustrator box or whatever and started animating things, yeah. they realized, hmm, there, there are things that might happen here that we should also design. 
it, be it becomes natural because you're getting into a little bit of a story storytelling mode. Okay, we're gonna tell uh, the developers, uh, developers how to move from like adding this thing to this thing and then the user does this thing and then you go to the checkout. Uh, it becomes natural when you're thinking in a story mode that things go wrong because things go wrong in, in stories. There's going to be obstacles. So somehow that just spawned the, the failure mode thinking into existence somehow. What did we learn? learn. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay, so can we conclude in what we have... In three. Uh, one insight that I had was that once we started talking, we realized that working with a designer is not all that different from uh, any working relationship. Yeah. And also, if you find someone or know someone that you know that you're working well with, that is probably the, the, the best person for it. Uh, but if you don't have anyone that you know that you work well with, then you should go out and try to find these people. And they can be remote and that you can find them through marketplaces. But if you have someone that you have a good rapport with, you should probably go for that person first to be have like an effective project. Yeah, and don't get afraid and get stuck in these marketplaces. Try to find a designer. Like once you find someone that might be that, try to uh, buy gradually more time from that person and risk more and more and more to build trust and try to find that person so that you can get this rapport relationship with because if you have that that is tremendously valuable you should try to meet people so they can have a post-it note that say that this remote worker likes us now digital communication tools are not nearly good enough to provide the bandwidth that a real interaction does so make sure that you get real interactions if at all possible if you thought that this conversation was interesting, write that in comments. If you thought it was not interesting, write that in the comments. You have been watching Dev Tips with David and MPJ. Thank you for watching, and I will see you, and Matthias will see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, and also go to Fun Fun Function and watch the interview that we did uh, from Nordic JS. It's here in the episode description.